Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, not too long ago I did a book review on the Gundam Hobby Life issue number 11 and after doing that, uh, my friend Ricardo, who actually helped me get that book, told me that, hey, like if you like the waterside decals that came with with that issue, you should check out the waterside decals that came with issue number 9 and he showed me that and I uh, immediately found an online shop to buy this and ordered it straight away because I really, really had to have the decals that come with this issue. They're super, super nice. So I'll show those to you guys here at the end because once again, those are located here at the back of the issue. So we'll just go through this magazine uh, just like I did with the issue number 11. And then at the end, I'll show you the amazing, amazing waterside decals that come with this uh, with this issue. So this issue came out in uh, when I don't know exactly. I don't see any date on here. Let's see. I'm not sure of the month, but 2016. So it came out last year. 1,800 yen for the price of this. The same as issue number 11. The website I got this off of is called like CD Japan or something like that. I guess they sell like books and CDs and things like that. Um, from Japan, so it cost, I think it was around $25 maybe, which is a little bit expensive, but this issue does look really cool. The uh, focus of this issue is premium, as you can see there, but it's on uh, premium Bandai special, so I think a lot of the feature builds in here will be stuff that uh, features uh, premium Bandai kits, so yeah, it looks like that. So we'll just uh, cr get cracking here, go through this book, and uh, see what all we've got. Oh, there's a little uh, like a preview, I guess it doesn't really help to uh, keep the decals from you guys till the end if it's showing them right there on the page, but anyway. Uh, opening up to like the main spread page, talking about like, or introducing kind of like the main topic of this issue. Premium Bandai, so you can see some of the, it, uh, some of the kits here feature, we have like the Tall Geese 3, uh, one of the Biolarnt kits, like the uh, custom version of the Goof, that Destiny Impulse Blanche, I think was the name of that one, I forget exactly, the Heavy Gundam, uh, that mass production type of Hyakushiki, Excess, Ribau, a couple of the things on there. And then obviously the main one here is the Hainu Gundam with the Heavy Weapon System. The Heavy Weapon System was the Premium Bandai exclusive. So I haven't seen who that's by, but we'll we'll get into looking at this here. So this one is by Naoki. Oh, okay, so yeah, it makes sense. I was pretty sure that this was Naoki's build actually because it has like that very Naoki-esque style um, orange marking on there. So yeah, also it's kind of a dead giveaway with that uh, style of weathering that I talked about in the last issue, how I just really love Naoki's style of weathering. Oh, it's super, super subtle. And it looks so good on this, and just all the detail, all the detail work on this build, and like I said, that weathering looks so good. So there's the just kind of showing the item, the heavy weapon system there. So he didn't give it that like purple polka dot uh, paint scheme on the shield. He just left the shield just all white and actually painted in the vents in there in like a dark red. Looks super nice. Love the colors on this. Uh, but he did he did keep like the gradient purple to white there on. There, you can see there's that orange stripe on that booster shield there on the back as well. It's kind of hard to show you guys. There you go. That orange stripe on there on that shield looks super cool. Uh, this really, really uh, not regretting ordering this magazine. It's a really great inspiration. I'm sure you can see, like, the, the thing about with these books is, like, a lot of the stuff you can just find online. You know, just find photos of this. Like, if you just search, like, Haoki, uh, Naoki High New Heavy Weapon System, I'm sure you could find lots of pictures of this online as well. But... It's just cool to be able to have this here, you can see, and uh, like with the previous issue, they do show you guys some work in progress photos here. Again, unfortunately, all the text is all in Japanese, but you can still see, you can basically kind of get the idea of what he's done here, just basically extending the toes, and then doing some other work here, just kind of changing the, some of the proportions of things uh, here on some of those parts. Then the uh, Hyakushiki Kai, sorry not the mass production type, but Hyakushiki Kai here, this one is also modeled by Naoki, okay, sorry, I guess this is a very Naoki heavy issue, I hadn't realized that either, but okay. Uh, so yeah, just really not my personal favorite version of the Hyakushiki, not really too into that alien head on it, but it's interesting and obviously this one as well wow this is really cool here let me see if there's a better picture maybe that's gonna be easier for you guys to see but hopefully you guys can see that even on the gold so of course he's done like the gold plated uh, gold plating painting on there but he's even like weathered the edges of that as well too which on like gold plated kits you really don't see people weathering them much but he's done his like very signature style of like really subtle weathering 
there even on the edges and things of the plated gold as well, which looks really cool. Looks really nice. And I'm not really sure what the deal with these pilots. It says these are like exclusive pilots. So here's like a, an Aug one and there was one for there was a Londo Bell pilot here as well. Uh, here for the high new. So I don't know if that was like a, a P Bandai set of like exclusive pilot figures or something. I don't know what the deal with that is. Uh, so there's just an Amuro Ray there. Anyway, so back to that. We'll get rid of that. Just some more photos of this kit. It's got the double bazookas on the backpack and the shield from the Gundam Mark III. I'm pretty sure that didn't come with this kit, so that was added, it looks like. And here it just looks like it's kind of a comparison. Basically what, what it is, just like the stock kit, is just like that, and then he gave it the wing binders and the extra armaments and stuff. Uh, to just kind of beef it up even more there. So really cool. You can see some of the extensions. Again, he also extended the feet and changed up the proportions on the torso a little bit. Uh, added some bits on the skirt. That front skirt extension, that's uh, something he did. What was that on the thing? That's like the exact same thing. I'm just kind of looking at my stack of kits here next to me. That I think that's the same on the Amazing Strike Freedom. Has that same kind of part there extending out of the crotch like that, if I remember correctly. It's really cool here. The next one is the Heavy Gundam. This one is modeled by Maverick. Hmm, I, I know I've seen a lot of his work on Twitter, but I've never seen this one. But uh, yeah, so this has got the Heavy Gundam painted up here in a really cool color scheme. I liked the kit, but it's it was uh, the kit, you can definitely see that it's like based on an old kit. If I remember correctly, it was based on the Perfect Gundam. It was like what was it? a lot of like the base kit came from for that. Uh, and then the new parts didn't really look that great, but it's looking pretty good now, for sure. Uh, here, there's no pilot figure for this one, but it's just kind of showing the, the pilot there, I guess. But yeah, that color scheme and just the really sharp details. It's not like super detailed out, but he's gone in and added just these little bits of detail here. You can see there's like just little panel lines and things added on there that look really cool. Of course, that custom decal on there, that unicorn decal with the heart looks really cool. There's a nice work in progress photo. You can see like just how much he did to that. So the kit should be like pretty much all brown. So you can see just how much of the original kit is left there. Pretty much just the legs where he probably just did a bunch of scribing and, and all of that. And then like the main parts of the torso. But then a lot of this is just all kind of built up all around around there. Some more work in progress photos here. A couple more detailed photos there. Really great detailing there on the shoulders. Looks really nice. And then the Tall Geese 3, modeled by Ziggy. This one, we do have a pilot figure for that. The, the uh, little pilot figure there, of a helmeted Zex Marquise. And this one, as well, just really nice. Pretty simple. This, this one, I think, didn't have as much... Uh, let's get to the work in progress videos. I think this didn't have as much done to it, in terms of like changing it that much. It's a lot of just really small things changing some small proportions and things like this, but I don't know, people who may be more familiar with the tall geese than I may be able to spot more differences than I can, but uh, looks really nice though. You can definitely tell that he's changed up the, the crest on the horn on there. The colors are so really nice on that as well. Not usually typically a fan of like white and blue. Uh, it's just a little bit too cold and simple for me. I, th I like stuff that's a little bit more warm, I think but it does look really nice and just the little bit of red and yellow on there definitely makes it nice. So there's some more work in, progress, work in progress photos here. You can see he's extended the legs there, extended the calves a bit. So you can see, if we go back to the standing photo, so you can see this part of the legs has been extended there. That's always nice. Got to have those long sexy legs on there. All right, then we have the uh, S Gundam booster type unit, so yeah, booster unit type. So this one is modeled by uh, Takumi Mizuki. So this was a premium bed kit that I really wanted to get, but it was just way too expensive. I think it was like around hundred dollars or something. Like the base kit, I guess it's really not that much different. I mean, just the standard Master Grade XS kit, kit is, I think it's like eighty dollars around there, for like the standard price for that. So twenty dollars more, I guess, for an extra set of booster legs. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I just couldn't, couldn't.
couldn't do it for that one, so I passed on this kit, and I'm not regretting it all that much, but it does look really nice here, especially in the red color scheme compared to the standard blue. So there's that. I'm interested to see what else he, he did to that here. It looks really nice, though. This, I love how clean and everything is on this. It looks so fresh and perfect. All the other kits as well, but like this one especially with that nice red and orange and white. It's super fresh looking there. And here you can see uh, that is either a probably resin garage kit or a completely scratch built. Uh, Zeku Zui there I would imagine, but I'm not exactly sure. A few work in progress photos here. Look at that. All that plot plating detailing going into that piece behind the head there. That's pretty amazing. And that's like behind the head where, where no one's really going to ever see it that much. But it looks really good. Ah, and uh, before we all go into the next one, let's go back here. This is what I was talking about uh, in my video before. I did a video, a uh, frequently asked question video about Advance of Zeta and Sentinel being properties that uh, the story and character properties are not owned by Bandai, but the the like Gundam designs still are. So like this is a this is a perfect example. So like here for the pilot, they they don't show any pilot for it. Uh, now this isn't a, a Bandai owned magazine. This is actually put out by Kodokawa. But uh, it's just the fact that uh, just Dengeki Hobby, or sorry, I think it's uh, I think I can't remember who owns Sentinel. I think it's Hobby Japan or no. Anyway, at the moment I can't remember who actually owns the Sentinel, the rights to Sentinel. But it's just another case of uh, they own the rights to just the story and the characters, whereas like the Gundam designs uh, are still just owned by Bandai. So that's how those are able to be allowed in here. But no pilot. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we have the. Impulse Gundam Blanche. A pretty cool design actually. I was really th kind of thinking about getting this kit. I'm really not that big into the Destiny Wings, but I love the look of the Impulse and the weapons on this and the all-white color scheme did look pretty cool. So really contemplating getting this and I think I may have to hunt one down now. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I'm definitely thinking about that more now. But he's added a lot of detail to this. You can see uh, there's just a lot of color tone difference in there, just different tones of white and gray as well. It kind of helps to break it up quite a bit. This one is by Shunpei Yamagu y Yamauchi, Yamauchi, sorry. And he's uh, like squared up the wings a bit more, so like on the top of the wings, they're not so round. There's more angled. I think that definitely makes it look a lot better. Just throughout the kit, actually, it's a really nice kind of mix of sharp angles and rounded edges. So you have like some areas where you have like here on the shoulder there's a lot of sharp angles around there. It's not curved at all, but then around the upper arm it's curved. On the top of the chest it's curved. On the legs you have more curves there, but then you have some areas where it's just all angles. So it's a really nice mix of that. I think usually people want to go either like all one way or all the other. Just have it like all nice and curvy or all really angular. But this one makes for a really nice mix between those two aesthetics. So. These close-up photos are really nice to just be able to see all these little details in here really nicely. Those are all looking really cool. There you can see just like the backpack uh, just transformed like that. That really big marking there on the wings looks really cool. And you can see maybe just a, a couple of work-in-progress photos there. It looks like he did some vacuum forming. Uh, that is a process I know very little about. I know kind of the, basically what it is, but it looks like maybe he used that vacuum forming for making the new parts for the wings. So basically what it is, is uh, it's kind of like doing a resin cast, I guess, but uh, this is just kind of going to be a very <laughs> loose description of what the process is. But I think it's like you basically you make your part and then you kind of make a mold of it by using this kind of kind of vacuum suction, just kind of makes the two halves around it, kind of like that. Yeah, I don't know exactly, but it's something like that. Anyway, and then uh, this is just some item data. So this is about just like the stock kit. So that's just what the, the stock kit's going to look like. You can see the wings are pretty much exactly from the Destiny of Gundam. And I don't have the kit, but I'd imagine that those are just runners taken directly from the Master Grade Destiny. And then just kind of a few new runners for that. There's a little bit here uh, illustration. So the issue 11 had this as well for the, I think it was the Exia Repair. Um, this time it's got uh, some really nice illustration here of the Astray Noir and the Impulse Blanche there. And then we have here a Byrlarnt Custom Titans test team version. 
This one is by Ryuji Sorayama, another very well-known modeler. So basically, uh, yeah, this is taking the, this was the high grade, let's see if there's a picture over here. This was the HGUC uh, BioLearns Bio Custom Unit 2. I did a review of this kit way long ago, long time ago. Really cool kit, but it's just a variation of the BioLearns. And he's really decked it out with a lot more stuff here. I gotta wonder if some of those advanced Zeta parts, like this big part of the backpack here, and these parts on the shoulder, if those are from a resin conversion kit and then kind of converted to work onto this, or if that's completely scratch built. Let's see, because I know those look like, I think that's the Hazenthlay, or one of those kits like has some of those parts, so let's see. Yeah, 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 you can see here those parts are from resin kits there, so that he's just kind of made to work on this kit, and then some other parts, like these parts here on the shoulders are from the uh, Gaplan Haru, and then just some other things here, so it's just kind of a, a mix and match of scratch build and kit bash and resin stuff. He's kind of brought all together to make this really awesome Advance of Zeta by Arlant. I've actually never seen this before, it's a pretty awesome build. This is something that I, that I would really would have liked to have seen. So I'm really glad that I got this, man. I really like this this magazine a lot. This was definitely money very well spent. Here is the high grade Ribau. Uh, it's unfortunate that the RE came out later, which probably would have been a little bit nicer to work on bigger scale. I could add even more details to that, but it's just taking the high grade, which is pretty small, and really detailed it out. And the Bau, the HGC Bau is uh, probably not the easiest kit to work on. It's old and probably just takes a lot of work. So to do all the detailing and everything on this is is uh, impressive, for sure. Oh, I really love that shield as well. It's kind of like combining the shield of like a Delta Kai, sort of s, kind of like a Delta sort of shield, combined with the Bau shield there. That's pretty awesome. Really like that a lot. So here you can see just some parts of that. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure. That looks like it's maybe just like all completely scratch built or. Those are parts from something else. It's kind of hard to tell. You can see he's done some proportion changes, uh, stretched out some bits, changed some bits around, obviously lengthened the legs for sure. This That kid definitely needed that. Uh, I actually have this, this kid, the HG version as well, and I kind of started working on it a long time ago and just kind of gave up. But. Uh, and then we have the 21st century real type version. So this was a set of these three kits, the Revive RX-78 2 Gundam, the Revive Goof, and the Revive Gun Cannon kits that came out in real type colors. And so he's gone ahead and painted these. This is by Max Watanabe. So I talked about him in the last episode. Really unique, awesome paint style here, kind of like the godfather of pre-shading Gunpla. He's uh, basically up there with uh, Kawaguchi as like kind of one of the godfathers of Gunpla. So. Some really awesome coloring here. The painting, I really want you guys, to, I hope you guys can see this well enough. Can you see that texture in the painting and that color? It's super cool. I'm guessing that he paints this uh, with lacquer by brush, kind of similar to how Matt K kits are painted. But I don't know, I'll have to, I'll have to talk to Lincoln. Lincoln probably knows, because I know he knows Max. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. These look really cool. I know those kits did come with water slides and stickers for like these markings, but I can tell some of these markings are are custom, so he must have designed some of those especially. And he's got these little dioramas it looks like, or at least for the gun cannon. Anyway, he's got this really cool, uh, just kind of like jungle diorama. I like this, how it's like on this little stage and it's like elevated up just by this bar up off like the main part of the base here. It's just really cool, like dynamic with the base. It's not your, it's not your standard base. I'll actually have to try something like that. I really like that idea. Because just your standard base, if it was like just like that, that's, I mean, that's really cool, but it's not really anything special, but just adding all that just makes it really cool. Here's some work in progress photos there for the base and all that. And then the Gundam has the uh, G-Falcon. There's some work in progress photos there for that. And then the Gundam has the um, the G-Fighter and the Goof also has the Dodai. So instead of like uh, doing dioramas for those, he painted up those things as well for the Tabira, but he did the bases in the same style. They're just like elevated up off the base. Pretty awesome. And I think this is the last of the main features. This is the Zaku 2 Dozo Zabi Use by Nobuyuki Sakurai. This one I think at first glance doesn't look like there's too much done to it, except for just being like the main kit with those uh, special like gold marking stickers that came with it. But I'm not sure how well you can see it, but the blue is actually like a really slightly like metallic blue and really glossy. So let's see in some of these pictures if there's a work in progress or like showing the 
the original kit. There's not, but anyway, this also looks really nice. Not really my cup of tea. I never really bought any of these kits because I don't really like the style of them. Uh, they're interesting, and I think they would probably make really nice display pieces if you're like really super fan of like Xeon mobile suits. But they're just not really my my style. I kind of like more MSV kind of colors and uh, realistic kind of colors for this kind of Zaku's. Another illustration here is this one of the ground type Gundam there. Pretty cool scene and beautiful illustration there. That's really nice. We really like to have a poster of that or something. Oh, and then we have kind of like a build of that basically. Here's just showing like the process of the painting, work in progress of the painting from like the shadow sketch to a line sketch and then blocking in the colors and just kind of filling in all the details and light and everything. That's a really cool process of illustration. And then there's like a kind of custom build, diorama build of that. Here's one thing I really like about this diorama build as well is how high up the trees extend on this. So this is another thing where it's like, if it was just this, that would be would have been a nice diorama, but because it has all this much extra tree going up there, it just really makes that really unique. So that's really cool. I like that's interesting ways to think about constructing a diorama. Another nice big uh, dramatically lit photo of that here. You can see with the little figure. There. I, I'm suddenly forgetting the girl's name, uh, so I feel bad. But anyway, this is just using the master grade kit here. This build is by Satoshi Honjo. So there's some more photos here of that. All the little trees and leaves and everything that are painted. It's pretty amazing. And then here, just like before with the, uh, what I originally thought was the perfect grade, but someone else pointed out was just the, just plain one, one, one sixtieth scale Zeta kit in issue 11. In this issue, it looks like this is just taking the one one hundred scale uh, Gundam Mark II. So it's the old, old kit, the old one hundred scale Gundam Mark II kit. And we have two builders just kind of doing their different take on it. So here on this side is Max Watanabe. Again, really interesting paint style on that. And this one, this side, uh, Torio Toriyama again. So I don't know, maybe they do this for every issue. Because that's the same two of them that did the Zeta. But here you can see just a kind of close up of different painting style there. Max's painting style. Yeah, I'll definitely have to ask Lincoln if he knows anything more about that. And then really kind of more anime style here, it looks like on this side for uh, Toriyama. So we have uh, nice big photos of both of those. There's of Max's and this one. Yes, that's really very anime styled and you can see it has like these kind of effect parts around there. It's quite interesting. So it's, uh, so he's even like played with the proportions. So you can see like how that's mixed. It has a really huge foot and really huge hand. That's quite interesting. So if you look at it from the front, it doesn't look that strange, but like looking at it from the side, it's gonna look really weird. And then here we have a Masala, which wasn't a P-Bandai kit, obviously. I think that was only for like the main features. Uh, but this one is by Yoji Shinkawa. Oh, actually, if you guys don't know who Yoji Shinkawa is, he's the designer that has done pretty much all of the design work for like the Metal Gear Solid series. And he's now working uh, with uh, Hideo Kojima at Kojima Productions. So there's the, the character there from Kojima Productions and there he is there. So amazing illustration artist and I had no idea that he was an amazing modeler as well. This thing looks really cool. You can definitely see that Metal Gear influence in this. It definitely looks like it has this, some like kind of Metal Gear aspects to it and just kind of the way he's painted this up and weathered it up. Very realistic and basic in his color scheme. It doesn't really have like any points of like highlighted points, little dashes of color or anything. It's pretty much just all gray and metallic and stark looking. It's very much like to his style of like designing the mechs, like the Metal Gear. So this thing is really cool. I've never seen this before either. So that's pretty awesome. Really interesting to see and some of the details and things they added in here as well. It looks like it's probably just like taking like spare parts or different things like that and just kind of added them in there. Really interesting. Mika Duki August. I don't know if that was a misprint or what. You can see, not Mikazuki. It's Mika Duki August. There, a uh, non-scale scratch build by Model Loft, Hironori Tsuchida. Yeah, and a 100 scale high resolution Barbatos there by Nobuyuki Sakurai. So it's actually not very often to see like a painted up build of the uh, high res Barbatos, but. There's that. So there's a couple more photos of those kits. We're getting close to the end here, so I'm just kind of going a little bit quicker through this. This isn't like, isn't like the main feature. Uh, the Suku Suku Scratch build section here looks like it's talking about building parts for the shoulders for if you want to make one of these guys. This is another one. I forget the name of this exact variant. Um, 
shoot, that's really going to bother me now. But another advance of Zeta variant anyway, and this is showing about scratch building parts for the shoulders for that, apparently. So that's pretty interesting there. Some SD, giving a little bit of love here at the end to a few really nicely painted up SD kits. Uh, some Gundam new releases, this is just talking about some new stuff that was coming out at the time. This is now from 2016, so not really relevant anymore. So these are just photos, yeah, from some hobby events. So just a bunch of snapshots of some different builds and things, I guess, that were on display there. And we have this little section for these. It says the Naoki's comment. So I guess just some little words of wisdom or commentary there from Naoki on a few of these builds here. Uh, and then it gets into just some more stuff. This is all just going in black and white now. So there's a lot of little stuff in there. You'd have to kind of look through that, all that in, in much more detail. Uh, and here about the issue of uh, Gundam Astray Destiny, Gundam C Destiny Astray B. Yeah, so I don't know if this is an excerpt from the novel or just about the novel. I'm not really sure. But here's just uh, more interview here with Max Watanabe and Toriyama. Well, that, uh, how to premium Bandai, just showing how to order premium Bandai kits. Even the Japanese people must have trouble, trouble with it. I kind of doubt that, but there's a guide to doing that if you're living in Japan. And then these uh, pilot figures here, so I guess this is just again kind of talking about those pilot figures. I really don't know what the deal is with those. If you guys know, let me know. But now that we're to the end, we can get to opening the decals. Here's just another little advertisement for those uh, mini Gunpla kits. Let's get to these decals because they're really amazing. As with issue 11, the decals are related to what the uh, kits featured in the magazine were. So, as you may guess, they're basically decals uh, for the builds that were in there. So, I'm wondering how different they are. Because I know some of those P Bandai kits do come with decals. So, these versions, I don't know, are going to be different. It's not as big of a water slide sheet as we had with issue 11. But it's definitely got a lot more decals on it. There are smaller ones packed on there. Where with issue 11, those decals were basically for uh, like bases. But in this case, they're actually for like your model kits. So that's why they're going to be smaller. But take a look at that. So you can see we've got some Amuro Unicorn logos there for the for the Hainu. Some Titans, uh, Advance of Zeta logos here. We've got that Unicorn Heart logo there for the Heavy Gun. Number. You mean you can use this stuff for whatever you want. Some Titans test team logos there, EFSF logos, logos uh, for the transforming mobile suit, for the XS, or any other transforming uh, Zeta era mobile suit that would use that uh, transforming logo there. Just some numbers, not really too into those, that's kind of like the uh, Gundam Mark II style uh, numbering. I'm not really into that uh, font of numbers for kits, so I probably won't actually use those for, for much, but. Uh, some more EFSF logos there. The logos there for the Ribawu. That'll be nice to have those for the high grade. Uh, some more Titans logos here. And then the uh, big decals for the Destiny Impulse Blanche there. And then a couple of just kind of standard Xeon markings there. But here's the thing I'm talking about because I know the Destiny Impulse Blanche came with water slides. So I'm not sure if these are different. Maybe these are a different color of water slides. I'm not sure. I would have to. I have to check it out. Like I said, I'm kind of interested in hunting that kit down now, so I'll have to check online. I'm sure there's, like, I know there's been reviews of the kit and everything, so I'll check some reviews. I know I've seen them before, but I can't remember if those are a different color. But anyway, this water slide decal sheet is basically the reason why I wanted to order this magazine, but I'm super happy with this magazine. So that was it. It was a long one, but hopefully that was interesting for you guys. This was another really awesome magazine. Don't know if I'll be getting any more of these or when. Maybe when a new one comes out, but as far as like past issues, I don't know, unless I hear of one of them being particularly really cool. Uh, they're not that cheap. This one I was happy to get, but I don't know if I'm definitely going to like collect them all or anything. Anyway, this was a cool one. Anyway, thank you guys as always for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time.